All right, let's go to get this started here. For those coming in now, for those who come in later, our plan here tonight is to have fun, relax, enjoy some men of culture content, play some Castlevania. We got some stuff here. All right. That's the stream ending, Dead Man. No. <laughs> no. No, it's just starting. Just starting. Just starting here. Uh, as far as men of culture content, we have. Uh, man, we got some good stuff here. Got some good stuff here. Hi, Karu Oyama. And an Asian girl's smelling armpits? What's going on with that? It's a weird fetish thing. Uh, also, is it moral to sell your girlfriends to rich old men? Uh, morality was never part never part of the, the question. It wasn't even part of the equation there. <laughs> she doesn't get to say so, right? I mean, come on now. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's start with... Um, Haikaru Oyama. What's with the headband, big guy? It gets sweaty. It gets sweaty in this elaborate garage. It does. In this elaborate studio. It does. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, start with this. Now, this video, this video, <laughs> video here, uh, she does a, she tries to do um, blindfold, stand on one leg. We'll see how, how it works for her. It's probably not going to work well. We'll see. <laughs> All right, just get ready for it. Okay. She's putting on the blindfold. There we go. I mean, I'm going to go in and tell you. I don't think I don't think she stays. I don't think she maintains her balance at all. I mean, I've seen her in the Sherbet channel and I can tell you she's not uh balance isn't really her thing, but we're going to have a lot of fun anyway. This will be a lot to enjoy from it anyway. <laughs> Off to a great start. Off to a great start. Off to uh, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> With her struggle, I get enjoyment. <laughs> Through her struggle, I get enjoyment. Look at this. Uh, this bounce physics. Uh, pretty good. Look at that. <laughs> does she actually make it? I mean, how long does she stay on one leg? So... So the goal, all she has to do is just bounce around on one leg. Can she stay on one leg? Okay. <laughs> She's leaning on walls. This doesn't count. That doesn't... Okay, okay, okay. It's over. It's over. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. That was great. That was great. Uh, uh, uh man, this boob physics in this fighting games, right? I mean, that's pretty spot on. I mean, let's let's watch that again. Let's watch that one more time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Nice. Nice. Good, good. 
Let's see. Can you bounce on one leg if you have a headband over your eyes? <laughs> probably not. Probably not for very long. Uh, <laughs> and I, <laughs> uh, I don't think my boobs will bounce as much as hers either. Uh, I, I'd much rather watch this <laughs> than watch that. <laughs> uh, and then and then we're gonna get weirder with uh, in this video, which that uh, Gravu models there, Haikaru Oyama. Okay, she, she's a Gravu model. Uh, I think she does do some JAV stuff. I'm not exactly sure on that, um, but she. Okay, I mean. I know her from the Sherbet channel. That's how I've stumbled upon her. Uh, let's see. In this video, they, I think, are smelling armpits. I mean, that's what they're doing. Watch. Watch. I, I don't know how to explain it. Look. look. Like, are they trying to smell for BO or smell for perfume? I could translate it, but it works better not even translated. Okay? When you trans... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. 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 Oh, body soap. Okay, okay, okay. That That's a body soap, but that's a smell. Mm. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Where is she putting her nose? That's the chick that was bouncing on one leg. Where is she going with her nose, going south? I hope she, did she put the body soap down there? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Man, what the hell? And she's the pervy one of this whole group, of the whole Sherbet channel. Hikaru Oyama is the one that'll be much more touchy filly. The one who's gonna be uh a little little, you know, free with the hands, you know, a little frisky there. Look, look what she's doing. Immediately it's like she goes from armpit down to down to the crotch. I mean she wants to get a good whiff. <laughs> she she wants to get a good whiff of that armpit. She really wants to see if that's so I don't know, man, fights off the BO. Does it have a fishy stink to it? <laughs> oh, she's not satisfied. That body soap isn't working. Look, 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 look at that face. Look at that face. <laughs> she's like, mmm, I gotta be honest with you. You stink. Look at that face. That face says it all. That face says it all. You stink. You stink. She just she she just got done smelling her cooch. She just smelled her armpit. And, and it's like making that face, like, ah, oh, I have to break it to you. But your pits stink worse than your fucking vag. You understand that? <laughs> what the fuck? This is what they do over there for fun in Japan. <laughs> She's going in for another whiff. She's not satisfied. She's like, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let's go again. <laughs> smells like a tree. Smells like pine. Is that what we're going with? She smells like pine? She <laughs> okay, okay. Um... <laughs> It's body soap. Okay, okay. I guess that's the game. She puts on whatever, and they have to guess what it is based on uh, just smelling her. All right. Making sense now. <laughs> now, her name is Rina Hashimoto. And she is also a graver model. I mean, they're all graver models. She's also, I know, she's done JAV stuff. Um, you know, I think in the near future, going to start doing porn reviews. I think in the near future, that's good, That's what it's going to be. All right? I think I think it's my calling. Uh, anyway. Uh, 
immediately, as soon as she got in the center there, you, I know you paid attention. I know you paid attention. She just has that pull about her, right? Look at that. Boom. Boom. You immediately notice. You immediately notice, and you know why. Ooh. So we know it's coconut. What do they guess? Uh, it's inviting. They want to go back again. Mm. What is that? She smells like a safari? What is it? What? what? You smell like a safari. <laughs> it still looks funny. Like, we didn't know what it was. It's like, you have all these chicks smell her hair. <laughs> She had to stop her. She had to stop her. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing smelling my, my tits? Oh, I know I know what you're trying to do. Okay. Oyama, I know what you're trying to do. Oh, <laughs> 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 Oh, we're dropping some frames. The weather over here is pretty bad, too. Uh, you know, I'm uh, taking a risk here. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't, I didn't, I was like, am I going to get a stream? What am I going to do? And we right out through this uh, little thunderstorm. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm recording a local copy, too. I always do. <laughs> You'll smell my BL. John theme, how's it going? Thank you. So they, they guessed the coconut? I guess I guess they guessed the coconut. Okay. All right, uh, let, let's guess the scent that she bathed herself in. Uh, we're dropping frames seriously here, but let's guess the scent that she bathed herself in, I suppose, that she uh, you know, put on her body. I haven't seen this before. I'm going to go something sweet, something like uh, watermelon or strawberry. Oh, oh. Let's see, what do we have? <laughs> Oh, oh my god, did, did you just drop an N word? Did you just hear that? Holy shit, let's back up. First off, let's back up again. Because didn't they... I think they messed up their format. Didn't didn't they tell us what the scent was? Okay. Yeah, they're not giving us a hint. They're not giving the audience a hint of what the scent is. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, but listen to her. I think she drops a hard... I, I think it's I think it's a nigga. I think she says nigga. Okay. <laughs> she said it. She said nigga eh? Nigga eh? Sure, look look at that. You heard that, right? Play it one more time. Nigga M, nigga M. No, I think that means something else. <laughs> I think that means no, no, no you know. <laughs> They're over here smelling armpits, licking armpit, armpits, dropping nigga, nigga M. Okay, <laughs> what's going on over there? <laughs> milk? Is that milk or is that green tea? What is that? Is that milk or tea? <laughs> uh, she smells like green tea. Is that what that's supposed to be? Or sake? She, she's in. A, she's been hitting the sake pretty hard. She's been sitting the hockey. It's hockey, hockey, sake. I've been hitting the sake hard. I've been hitting the whiskey hard. Ugh. 
<laughs> yep. Now she is spelled once again Oyama, the graver model of the evening, is going right to the gutter, right? She's the one who's very frisky, very hands on. She's the one that smells all the cleavage, smells the crotch. She does that. She does that. She doesn't know boundaries, okay? All right. She's like, wow, you smell good. Wow, your breasts smell amazing. I'm gonna get another whiff. Oh, she really wants to dig in there. Get in that armpit. Get in that armpit. <laughs> Just that look alone, dude. Uh. After this, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload the local copy that I'm recording because let's see we're dropping frames like crazy. We already disconnected. The internet's all over the place right now. <laughs> no way. She smells like curry and rice. Stop. Stop. It was whatever that is, which I think might be green tea. Or sake. I'm not sure what that scent is supposed to be. <laughs> With curry and rice? <laughs> Nasty. Oh. It, the, 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 yeah, I know the feed is hella laggy. I'm recording a local copy. Always do. It'll be uploaded. Uh, you know, I, I reset everything before I go. It, it's just what we have right now. It is storming right now, so that might be an issue. Why? Though, I don't know why that would be. It's not like it's a, a satellite, you know? Yeah. Oh, the Council of Evil is attacking you in retaliation <laughs> with the internet? <laughs> probably, probably. Oh... Uh, I've been paying attention. I see I see that they have their own little war now going with the with the farms, whatever. Uh, uh it's quite interesting. Quite interesting. Uh anyway. <laughs> Alright. Now what does she smell like? We'll go with vanilla. Mm. What is that? Rice cakes? Sweet? Like candy? She smells like candy? You smell the sweet like candy. Go in for another one. That's oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> Just the freeze frame of this alone is great. You know, you're like, this is what's going on. Uh, this is what the Japanese people are doing for entertainment. It's fun. It's kind of weird. Okay. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese game shows, right? <laughs> this is <a> game show. <laughs> Like Japanese YouTube stuff. What is, okay, what is that? Is that oil? You smell like cooking oil? It's like, damn, you smell good. You smell like cooking oil. Damn, that either looks like a bottle of cooking oil or a bottle of nail polish, which could kind of concerning because that would be like you reek of alcohol. Like, damn, girl. You've been hitting that vodka hard, haven't you? You've been you've been hitting that sake hard, haven't you? Damn. <laughs> Damn, that rice wine is going pretty hard on you, huh? <laughs> so she smells like, or or is that is that 
wait, maybe it's not cooking oil. Maybe it's not nail polish. Maybe it's baby lotion. Maybe it's uh the no uh no more tears, no tears, no tears, Johnson Johnson, uh safe for a baby, uh baby wash. Maybe it's that. That that's what the bottle kind of reminds me of too. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. It's kind of weird. They make yourself smell like a baby. <laughs> the the grand wizard, the grand wizard of the of the council. Uh, I gotta say, the people on the Kiwi Farms are really, really dumb, really, really dumb. <laughs> I think that they were able to convince that <laughs> because no one seems to know that I was the source of the leaks. No one seems to know that. It's like, all right. In fact, if anything, it's like, oh, oh, he's one of them too. That piece of shit. It's like, oh, okay, all right. I see them. Though I think that counts probably somebody else. I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to bring too much attention to it. I think you know what I'm talking about. If you if you went there, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> anyway, it's not important. <laughs> All right, now it's your turn. Now, my question. Our grab room model of the evening, Aoyama, being that she's kind of on the pervy side, I'm going to say that, all right? She, no boundaries for her. Is she? How is she going to be when everyone's smelling her? Is she going to be like getting them to smell her cleavage, like taking their hand, uh, taking their heads and put it right between? Is she be doing that? I wouldn't be surprised. Let's find out. <laughs> Oh, oh, she seems to be she she seems to be good with that. Let's let's back that up real fast. Well, she's like dig right in, dig right in. Dig, she kind of leaned in. She's like dig right in. Do you like that? Do you like that? Man, look at that look she gave her. She's like you smell about cleavage. You smell about cleavage. You better say something nice. You better say something nice because I have, I have some good stuff. She, oh, she gave her that look. How did it smell, huh? How did it smell? You like it? <laughs> oh, she's enjoying that. So what does she smell like? Hot garbage? Oh. Is that a... What is that? A can of? Is that, is that milk? Is that... Milk, vanilla, like vanilla ice cream. It kind of looks like a vanilla ice cream thing that, that he that he like a single package, like a small one that he peel. I want to, I want to say, Oyama kind of looks like she would smell like vanilla. Okay. Eat yogurt. <laughs> yogurt? She smells like yogurt. I think she said yogurt. Yogurt and curry and rice. That's not a good thing. You smell musky. You smell musky and kind of like. Uh, Day old yogurt. Ugh. Oh, God, girl. <laughs> That's right. Now we're wrapping up. We're learning about the smells we've, we've um, endured. <laughs> I got you, Sean. I got you, Sean. Uh, Amerta, that's also a really good song by Lamb of God. That is a good song. It is a really good song. How does that opening go? He who, uh, cannot survive with the law or... Uh, God, man, that, 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 that's a good one. 
Let's see. Let's see. Okay, it's right here. Whoever appeals to the law against his fellow man is either a fool or a coward. Whoever cannot take care of himself without that law is both. For a wounded man shall say to his assailant, If I die, you are forgiven. If I live, I will kill you. Such is the rule of honor. Well, I guess we're in that state now. I guess I guess we're there. I guess we're at the last bit there. I guess for the internet stuff, no one really dies. Like, come on. <laughs> it's a good it's a good quote. It's a good quote. I like I like that. Uh it that is a good song. If we were streaming on Twitch, I would play it. But we're not. You know, it's snitch, basically. Mm, y yeah, yeah, sort yeah. Uh, snitch, sure, sure, I guess. To the law, I suppose, yeah. Though, I wouldn't take what happened with the council like that. That was more like a... <laughs> I, I still can't believe it happened like that. I, I was really dumb, honestly. I was dumbfounded that DJ Axel, you know... This channel is so weird sometimes. Sometimes I wonder if the people watching afterwards even know what the hell I'm talking about. But, like, uh, I'm surprised he actually invited me in, like, the second time. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? It's like, okay. I mean, I had already betrayed Axel, like, a couple times before that. Betrayed him. And it put out a video. Pretty much calling him, like, horrible stuff. Mocking him for his, like, diabetes and all this shit. Okay. Um, <sighs> for those who don't know, DJ Axel was a furry. He's a super hardcore furry, homo, pedo person. I'm convinced he is a pedo. Um, if you openly joke like that to the point to where that's, like, your whole identity, then then you are. Then then that is you. Then that is you. That, that is, and it's no longer a joke. It's like, that is you. Now, moving on, another topic here is the topic of selling your girlfriends to the rich. Is it moral to do so? Well, if she agrees to it, then who, what's the problem? Okay. She's responsible for her actions. If, maybe she came up with the idea. To help make some money. And she agreed to it. What's the problem? But I guess we're going to look at this from a Japanese perspective. Apparently this is a thing in Japan. To me, it just sounds like being a pimp. Sell your girlfriend to the rich or old men in Japan. Is it sell your girlfriends as in multiple? Like like one guy, one multiple girls? That's a pimp. That's a pimp. Is that what we're talking about? We're talking about pimps. <clears throat> the prostitution here or is it like not that we're just talking about couples that are dating and then it just so happens hey we'll make, make some side cash okay well us we'll, we'll sell you sell your time to that guy okay but make sure you bring back that money words in moral theory so answering such questions as is oh, let me turn it up. Morally it right is low. or wrong is once again very difficult to answer. So please feel free to leave a comment below if you have anything to add. Is it morally right or wrong to sell your girlfriends to the rich? Already, I could tell you from my perspective, it's like, uh, <laughs> like, dude, like, if she agrees to it, it's something y'all want to do. Uh, you know, you'd be like, oh, well, legally it's wrong to, like, prostitute. Mm, okay. Is she cool with it? Then I'm good. Now, it's not something I would do, though. Because I don't like to share. If I did that, then that girlfriend would no longer be a girlfriend and would be, like, um, a bottom, a bottom bitch, Okay. Then I would have to get another girlfriend. That would be my prime 
you know, my, my main squeeze. All right. Add or any of your personal viewpoints. All idea. Uh, another way to look at this is so you're being a cuck for money <laughs> because if it's if if you're still dating that girl and she's you're selling her time, aren't you being a cuck for money? Ideas are more than welcome, but we believe for the sake of keeping this YouTube video short and on point. One quick suggestion could be to see this question from the epistemological point of view towards morality and come to your own conclusion on whether you believe the act of Papakat. Turn to the Bible. What's what's what does the Bible say about concubines? Um, they're mentioned quite a bit. You'd have to go to a drunken surfer stream on that. Honestly, I could have tell you uh, they're mentioned quite a bit and they're kind of there's one part where they're like cut up in pieces and sent out as like a message. Um, pretty, pretty hardcore. That's it. Is fundamentally right or wrong? The cog school of pimping. Yeah, yeah, cog school of pimping. By the way, guys, I know the stream is buffering like crazy. There's a thunderstorm right now. When the thunder rolls, when the lightning strikes, there's a thunderstorm coming in, okay? And it's causing issues. Maybe, maybe that's the issue. I, I, I reset everything. Should be good. Anyway, we'll get to this. One may look from the viewpoint of moral philosophers, such as Samuel Clark, who believe that moral good and evil are discovered by the reason of its uses, as in, the very rationality of right actions is the ground of our obligation to perform them. And according to philosophers, such as Thomas Hobbes, in some moods, if that is indeed the case, the members of the society can come to an agreement. How many of these old guys are also pedos? Contract. This is somewhat in similarity to how the Japanese society operates to some degree. As in See, I'm not really too familiar with like the philosophy of the, the guys mentioned. But what I'm asking is the philosophies of, uh, of old men from, from those times. It's like, okay, all right. You can look at that and be like, oh, okay, that's kind of kind of cool, I suppose. Kind of interesting. But it's like, how were they? as people how are they as individuals like what did they practice okay all right did they also have a bunch of side hoes Did they also have did they stick their dick in kids I'm, I'm just saying okay i'm just asking questions i'm curious then the supposed rationality in linking the supply and demand chain of rich and old men who are looking for love and physical intimacy with that of young women who are looking for financial sponsorships. And as this act can be justified by some people as rational from a transactional given- All this background music doesn't like, get me dinged or whatever. Take point of view, I'm gonna, I'm gonna can my be deemed music. as moral to the moral rationalists. By the way, if you also want to see an excellent video describing morality in Japan, please check out Nobita from Japan's recent video titled, How I Got My Morality in Japan. I love watching his channel, and this. All right, we're gonna skip ahead. We're gonna skip ahead to what he starts talking. You know, he's referencing another channel. I'm familiar with that channel as well. All right. Including probably the teachers as well. Just like. Okay, so no one spoke up against it. Oh, the bullying. Okay, so bullying in his classroom. No one spoke up against it. Let the bullying happen. This may be completely unacceptable to a person or a society whose epistemological point okay, of view of morality speed. is not that of moral rationalists, but of moral sense theorists such as Shaftesbury or Hutchison, who state that morality should be based upon moral sense, as in our human consciousness is built in the very way where we want to pursue goodness and avoid evil as a consequence of our very basic human nature. So simply said, if our very consciousness gives us a sense of approval and goodness on a certain act or an idea, it is moral, while an act or an idea that naturally provides a sense of evil and disgust, such as bullying or very old men waving money at women whose age are often younger than even that of their own daughters, is immoral. So once again... I mean, I would agree that that would be immoral, uh, looking at it like that, yeah, sure. Unless the individual is quite an idiosyncratic being, to put it mildly, 
with different neurological connections to that of a normal human being, I certainly hope that we would all agree on the fact that when we hear of or see acts such as bullying or underage compensated dating, the sense that emerges within our consciousness is not to do something to kick that person's ass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It happened to me in high school. I was the recipient of that shit. I was a little, a little, little shrimp and wimp in high school. And I was in the high school. No, no, actually, that was a uh, junior high or no, actually middle school. And the guy came and kind of saved the day. And then I returned the favor to somebody else <laughs> later on. So, yeah, yeah. But what I'm going to get here, I'm, I'm going to take a wild guess is the morality in Japan, though, is not like that. In fact, if anything, it's more like uh, for the mm, save face sort of thing. Like, uh, like we're going to pretend like it's not our problem. We're not going to really address the problem because how does it reflect on Japan as a whole, on society as a whole? Okay. That of goodness and approval, but that of disapproval. And I believe this was the case for most of the Japanese students who were witnessing the severe bullying which was going on at the school, including the Bira. The same sentiments of disapproval goes to how the majority of the Japanese population feel when they see individuals participating in acts such as papakatsu. And if the predominance of the morality in Japan was to the moral sense theorists, bullying would have been tackled straight on regardless of the quote-unquote disruption or as it is often phrased in Japan, causing trouble or causing a scene Causing trouble, causing a scene. You know, there was another video we watched where they talked about the domestic violence in Japan. And it is there is a problem there with domestic violence, but they don't talk about it because they don't want to talk about it. Because the problem isn't real until you address it, until you bring it up. But you're not even allowed to bring it up because... Okay. I kind of wondered, like, is is the idea like, you know what, let them settle it, let them take care of it in their own home, which I could kind of understand maybe in like a libertarian sort of way, whatever, but I, that's not what we're talking about here. It's more like, especially in a sense like this, involving kids in school and bullying and shit, and we're going to see it here with a, uh, pretty much essentially uh, paid dating or prostitution in a way. It's kind of like, well... Um, is it really a problem? Don't, I mean, don't cause a scene, bro. That's why people like will say, "Oh, Japan doesn't have any problems. Japan doesn't have a crime problem. Japan doesn't have like a rape problem or anything or a human trafficking problem." To be like, look at their stats, because there's a lot of shit that goes unreported. It's a safe face sort of a uh, society from what I noticed anyway, what I gathered thus far in my education of uh, Japanese culture. But uh... to the rest of the students by creating a scene at the school, if the subject matter is brought up to public domains. Let me provide you guys with an example from my own childhood. Okay. Before coming to Japan for university and work, I've spent a lot of my childhood and teenage years in Glasgow, Scotland. Whether it be primary school or secondary school, when there was any slight hint of bullying going on, the teachers, the headmasters, or whoever it may be, tackled the bullying head-on without the slightest of hesitation, regardless of whatever scene it may cause or whatever quote-unquote disturbance it brought to the school atmosphere by bringing such a disturbing issue to the surface. Okay, now that anecdotal is nice, but I kind of wonder if that's like, because maybe you have a situation, maybe you have an experience kind of similar to that. Uh, if you're in the West, Western society, maybe you don't, okay? I didn't. I didn't. When I was in uh, middle school, the teachers didn't give a damn, all right? They would pretend like they didn't see it, so they wouldn't have to report it, wouldn't have to make a scene, wouldn't have to address it. All right? All right? Um, but, uh, so I learned to handle things a different way.
But once again, bullying was just tackled straight on, as it was just the wrong thing to do as a human being to another human being. So why was this the case in Scotland, but not in Japan? While this is a complex question, I believe that one partial answer is that the predominant set of morality that runs in certain European nations is that of moral sense theorists such as the one espoused by Shaftesbury and Hume, while the one of Japan is that of moral rationalists. As in, as Dobita has stated in his video, I would like to see more evidence about uh, those, um, I guess, moral philosophies being actually practiced in, in those the societies to actually believe that, that that was the direct, I mean, like that is the reason why. Um, because another way to look at it is, like, a lot of Asian countries are collectivists in a sense. So, yeah, I mean, Japan's not as far as when it comes to, like, their economy goes. But they are when it comes to just about their culture. Uh, like, they, there's a lot of pressure. There's extreme pressure about following the norms. And if you don't follow the norms, you will be punished. Like society will punish you and it's kind of understood and expected and that's just a way. Anyway. The predominant set of morality in Japan is not following quote unquote what feels good and bright to us in our consciousness and our guts as good human beings. Yeah, being moral, doing the same as everybody else, doing what they do. Doing what they do. Follow the group. Follow the hive mind. The set of morality that runs in Japan is to follow what is rational, as in maintaining peace and group harmony that Japan as a nation so much emphasizes. Some scholars believe that this unique sense of peace and social harmony, which has historically existed in Japan since the Edo period, by the name of Wa, is perhaps the most important idea which represents Japan itself. As in, to describe traditional Japanese food in Japanese, we say washoku, not nihonshoku. Same with Japanese traditional clothing, as in, we call it wahuku, not nihonshoku. So this uniquely Japanese sense of peace and social harmony running at the core of the Japanese society Whatever action or an idea which helps to maintain such external social harmony in Japan is regarded Social harmony, social harmony. Do the same as everybody else. But at the same time though, if you see somebody getting bullied, like especially as like in the, in the class or whatever, is that doing the same as everybody else? Surely the teacher would address that, right? What? It, it seems kind of, kind of weird. Started as quote unquote rational and a certain degree of tolerance to acts such as bullying or sugar daddy papakas activity could be regarded as such instances. While intense group bullying may provide a sense of disgust and disapproval to the consciousness of a normal individual, this does not mean that bullying should be publicly tackled and eradicated in the minds of many of the Japanese collective psyche. This is as, in order to eradicate group bullying at school, a so-called scene has to be created, as in, the parents have to be brought in, the matter has to be explicitly discussed on the surface level. I'm it pausing again. I am failing to see a difference. There, there is a difference, I'm sure. Uh, maybe it's a thing of not really seeing the forest for the trees here, but um, I don't know, a product of America, my experience with bullying and other people's, I'm sure, I've seen around me, maybe, you're, you're, maybe you share the same. In a, in a Western society, but if there's an issue with you at school, with your behavior, with another student messing with you, doesn't the principal get involved? Don't your parents get involved? Don't you have a meeting about it? Isn't that stuff happened? I know it happened for me. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it happened for me as a parent too, in daycare. Shit, I was like, fuck, what the hell? Again? Went through a went through a period. I don't want to say too much. Just uh, just had a little ass kicker. Just had a little ass kicker. I just I was like, okay, okay, just stop, please, please stop, stop. 
Anyway. Instead of being shushed, and in the worst of cases, law enforcement might have to visit the school if the bullying is to go to the extent of physical harm. But then, this breaks the so-called wa of the Japanese society, as in breaking the surface. Look at that. Look, look what I said about collectivists <laughs> as far as culture goes. Look at this hive mind. Dude, they're all one. Singularity. Okay? It's harmony which existed in the school atmosphere. Hence, rather than tackling the bullying and causing a scene, it is sometimes considered as more rational in the minds of the Japanese group psyche to just let go of the bullying and turn a blind eye towards it. The same is obviously the case with Papakatsu. I think it is safe to say that the Papakatsu, Papakatsu, that's the practice of selling your girlfriend to old men in Japan, to rich old men. Or money idea of an old this is a roundabout way to get to this we talked about bullying and now we're getting back to this it's okay all right got it. and luring barely legal young women at first words of assurance such as quote-unquote meal and cafe dates only and slowly attempting to escalate the level of physical intimacy to the one of heading towards love hotels and in return being their quote-unquote daddy by paying and financially sponsoring them will not provide a moral sense of goodness and approval in your consciousness. No, it should be the very opposite. And that is why where the set of ruling morale- Sure, I guess it feels uncomfortable at, at the moment, but like the money pays the bills, the money pays for things. I'm sure they'll be fine. The quality of the nation is that of moral sense and not more rationalist as in the case of Japan, these types of compensated dating websites that encourages the young women to quote unquote sell their friends so explicitly is just outright banned. That's crazy. Well, so there's a website where you could sell your friend. <laughs> You're not selling yourself. You're selling your friend. You're selling your girlfriend. It could, the way he worded it, it's like, what the hell, dude? What the hell? Like, you don't even, you don't you don't even have ownership of, of your girlfriend. You're not even married yet, you know. Uh, <laughs> what the? Just, hold on, I'm I'm failing to understand this. Wait, wait. You mean you mean you can go to a website and sell your friend? Just sell your friend. <laughs> Why is that even allowed? Why is that even allowed? So you can go and uh, like. Craigslist are the the back pages are the escort aggregator and uh, instead of putting a listing for yourself you put in a listing for your friend huh okay <laughs> it's okay it just cannot exist in most countries at least on the perfectly legal domains as in the case of Japan but then Japan that mask, man. That's, uh... takes a more so-called rational approach to this issue of sugar daddying, as in, yes, an old rich man paying for physical acts of intimacy with a young woman who are often 30 to 40 years younger than themselves may feel wrong. 30 to 30 years younger than themselves. I just want to ask the question, are they underage? And in Japan society, age of consent is different. I'm to say is if they are the consenting age and they consent to be sold for their time, have their time sold to this man, then what is what is the problem? What is the problem? They consented to it. They get some money. We have to do some things with that money. Like it shouldn't happen. Well, I mean. Alright, then don't do it then wrong from a moral sense point of view but these types of old men will always exist hence in order to not create a scene by having law enforcement and other public institutions involved and ruin the national image of japan they just let these people do their thing through these papagas websites silently i believe the key word here to save face like i said in the beginning it's all about saving face say protect the integrity 
no, protect the face, the way Japan looks on the outside to everybody else. We don't want to be seen as a country with a lot of prostitution, a lot of sugar daddies. Okay, we don't want to be seen like that. So we're not, it's not going to be an issue. They're being the word silent as in not causing a scene while they do this and maintain the peaceful external harmony that runs throughout Japan. So we once again can- How's it going, cool tactic? The stream is stuttering at times, but we are learning right now about Japanese culture. Is it moral to sell your girlfriends to the rich old men in Japan? What I'm gathering so far is that it's accepted in society, in Japanese society, because uh, they don't want to make a scene or really address it. Okay? Just, just let it go, you know? Hey, if they're consenting, you know? I kind of don't have a problem with that. If they're underage, then definitely address that. And if they don't like the age of consent laws in Japan, definitely address that as well. Uh, I think their age of consent laws are bullshit. Uh, but I also think that you don't have to eat with sticks anymore. Uh, that's crazy for me to say that since a lot of my stuff has a lot of Japanese stuff. And I might offend somebody with that. But uh, forks and spoons and knives exist for a reason. And let me tell you something, man. Uh, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier. Okay. Anyway. Can come to the conclusion that, as I've stated earlier, Japanese people in general are not these amoral people who don't blink an eye towards acts that are morally questionable in other countries such as intense bullying at school or encouraging young women to sell their friends to other sugar daddies and get paid for it. No, most people feel just as bad in regards to such activities. Wait, he has a gun. That's bullshit. <laughs> Japan, just as much as anywhere else across the globe. But as in the case of school bullying, Papakatsu is just sort of let go or condoned to some degree, as Japanese society knows that certain types of people will always exist. Wait, isn't that kind of growing though in the West too? Like, just being cool with prostitution. Like, and it, I mean, what? Anyway. So, instead of risking putting these quote-unquote frustrated men on a dead end and potentially have to cause a scene in society, as they may inevitably will when they have no legal outlet in which they can release their so-called physical desires and have their frustrations heightened to the maximum degree, once again, the general mindset in Japan is to just let them do their thing quietly. I believe the keyword here being once again, quietly, release their desires and pent up frustrations and not cause visible scene and trouble. And if there are young women out there- See, look, she's smiling, she's happy, she got money. <laughs> who are willing to supply themselves to these men with such mindsets in return for money, then society goes in the direction of tacit condoning of such activities. She'll smile later when she gets that money. Obviously, I do want to point out that public figures such as politicians are subject to a much stricter moral compass in Japan as much as anywhere else. Thus, if their involvement in papakatsu does surface and become public, they will be a source of much harsher blame compared to that of an average citizen. So in order to summarize, we believe this is- So don't sell your girlfriend to a politician. Sell your girlfriend to a rich businessman and you're gonna be a-okay and fine. You understanding that? Okay? Don't go to Japan thinking you're gonna get into this market, okay? It's probably already capped, okay? Good luck. Just, just know that was a possibility. Was. Would you guys sell your girlfriend? Is that not being a cuck for money? Is it not? Is it not being a pimp? In a way? If you sell your girlfriend and you get another girlfriend. Because we're not talking about a wife. You can have as many girlfriends as you want. How many girlfriends can you have? As, as many 
Dude, if you have the desire for all that headache, you can have as many girlfriends as possible. Get them all. All right? Collect them like Pokemon or whatever. Get them all. And sell them out. Turn them into ATMs. Okay? Turn them into ATMs. That actually doesn't sound like a problem to me. Especially when I'm used to women looking at men as ATMs. But, whatever. I guess it's a problem. <laughs> so that took... So that was our... We went through our Men of Culture content. We had our learning moment. Uh, for for Cool Tactic, I'll tell you what we watch for the Men of Culture stuff. We watch Japanese women smelling each other's breasts and armpits. And uh, I think one smells the crotch. I'd see. It happens right about, I want to say, it happens early on. Man, it happens fast. Oh, we'll just play this. <laughs> skip, skip, skip. Yep. There we go. There we go. What happened there? What happened there? What was she smelling? Why she gets so low? Why she gets so low? What's she doing there? What's she doing there? <laughs> Play in pole position? No, 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 no. I hope not. That'd be that'd be a surprise. Turns out one of them's actually a dude. <laughs> okay. And then this video was great. This video. Uh our gravel model of the evening. Hi Kura. Oyama. Uh balancing on one leg. Balancing on one leg. We'll watch it one more time and then we'll play some Castlevania Symphony of the Night. She puts on the blindfold and her goal is to stay on one leg for as long as possible. Here we go. Oh, the bounce, bounce. Doing a great job, doing a good job. You got it. You got it. Better stay on that one leg. Don't cheat. great that's fantastic that's fantastic i love that love that so much okay that's our men of culture content for the evening now uh let's go play some castlevania symphony of the night the stream is suffering quite a bit quite a bit i am recording a local copy as i always do i'll probably use that as the uh uh, as the primary help below that. So I've been doing the randomizer. I've been playing the Castlevania Symphony of the Night with the, with everything randomized. It's pretty fun. Uh, last time I did it with... Uh, so there's a site you go to. All right. You can put in a seed. You know, a set of numbers. Uh, the one I did last time was 666, and it created a mode to where um, it kind of did suck in the beginning, but got bat early on, and then 
got the Christogram. I was not expecting it. Oh, actually, for the good portion of that, I was rocking these cool blue knuckles that would shoot like a Hydukin. It was really cool. Got that was like one of my first weapons. So once I got that, it was a game changer. It was great. Um, and just pretty much dominated. Like had no problem, no problem at all. Um, so this time what I'm doing is seven seven seven. Try to see if with a lucky number will uh, be a better experience. Well, I gotta say so far, it, it's kind of mixed. I put it on the screen. I don't. Well, where's my game capture? Here it is. All right. All right, let's turn down this music. <sighs> mm. And how are you guys doing, by the way? How is your, uh, what's today, Wednesday? You hate randomizers? Randomizers can be fun. It, it depends on the game. It depends on the game. I was trying, I was going to do cast, uh, what was it, Chrono Trigger randomized? But I really enjoy Chrono Trigger. It's like one of my favorite ro role-playing games for the, for the Super Nintendo. And the idea of making it extended by randomizing things sounds okay at first. But then it's like I don't know if I really want to go through all that grind for, for like nothing. Like I wouldn't know this dungeon I go into, am I really going to get the, uh, the key item I really need? Something like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, it's not that bad. Because the game goes quite fast. Like, you, you could beat this game pretty quickly. I mean, if if you play it like a like a speed run, shit, there's speed run guys that beat this game in under 30 minutes. Okay? Now, they use like sp speed run glitches and stuff and things I don't even know how to do. Oh, he lost the feet again. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. Trailer park internet during the rain. What can I tell you? All right, so this is... Well, see, I could see on OBS. Yeah, it's still dropping frames quite a bit. I'm waiting for it to stabilize. If it does, it hasn't stabilized at all. All right. Here's what we have so far. With the 777 seed, we have what looks like the S toke, but it's not. This is actually a bamboo sword. All the items, all, I mean, all the weapons and equipment have been randomized as far as their stats go. So you pick up one thing, it looks cool. But it's actually not what you think it is. All right. That part kind of sucks. Um, I have these rings to increase rare item appearance. Okay. I can do bat. Cool. I got the bat early on. So we are... Uh, going to go to the uh, we're going to go to the to the clock tower area got a ghost familiar I oh I also bought one of the Vlad pieces because in this game that so actually I already have the things I need. I actually already have the things I need to beat the game. I don't have it on him. I know where it's in the library. I, I, I died and I had a replay part. It sucked. But we're going to go to the library and we're going to get the holy goggles. Okay. And we already have bat form. We could if we wanted to at that point. Go fight Richter, right? We could. 
Um, let's see. We are, you know, fight the orb, whatever. We already have a piece of Vlad. So that means when we go to the Upside Down Castle, we're only going to need four pieces. That's it. And really, we're going to look around, too, in this castle. We're not going to go straight to Richter because there's a good, there's a possibility we could find one of the pieces of Vlad in this castle, too. So there's that. But I say that like that because it makes me wonder if the 777 is lucky. I'm not sure. I'll say so far, progress, uh, progression in the game, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Oh, okay. These little guys are annoying. Now, hopefully, this is open. Yes, we don't have any sub weapons. That's gonna be a problem, you know. We don't have. We don't. We don't even have the ability to get sub weapons right now. Uh, let's see. So we picked up that. What was that? What was that? Uh, restore HP by fire damage. So it's. We we might use that later on. Maybe. Maybe not. There's a lot of enemies that use fire, so. Huh. Are you serious? Oh, there we go. Fancy guy. All right, we're gonna go. Uh, this we're kind of in here early on. I just want to get some stuff. Like I don't have any equipment. I don't have any armor or anything. Anything like that. So if anything hits me, you know I'm taking a lot of damage. All right, doesn't need. We're going to go to the library, actually. I worry about that guy right now. All right, let's go to... We're going to head to the library, but first we're going to make a little stop. We're going to make a little stop. We're going to go to the middle part. Go up here. See if there's anything we need up here. Oh wait, I do have a sub weapon. I lied about that. So some enemies can drop us can drop sub weapons. Okay. Because all randomized. But what I was saying is that the candles, I don't get anything from the from the candles or the lanterns or anything like that right now. We have the Soul of Wolf. That's cool. That's cool. Now, can we already do the Wolf Charge? I don't think we can. Can we? It's kind of neat, though. Being a wolf. <laughs> Oh, See, if we get what is it power of the wolf? Is it that one where you charge? And you can just do damage to like little guys. Like, these little pieces of shit. 
Do we already have the jewel of open? Is it, we do have the jewel of open. We do have the jewel of open. So we can actually open that one area. Man, okay. Let's go ahead and hit this area. <laughs> How does your trailer have a garage? <laughs> it's a uh, a fancy double wide that the, the, the garage was, was added on. <laughs> You know, the, the lore's kind of gone, you know? The the mystery's kind of gone. For those that know what I'm talking about, I suppose. I'm sure I'm sure quite a bit of you don't. This enemy always looks cool, right? Look at that. That looks cool. Now, I don't know how to do the infinite wing smash. We got, once we get that down, we're gonna be good. We're gonna be good. Shit, we get dead. We get the infinite wing smash down. I gotta learn how to do that. That way I could like, you know, try to speed run this game. All right, all right, yeah, we're going to the library. And the music's been uh, rearranged too. I think you guys noticed that. We have our heart upgrade. All right, that we already got. Okay. Oh, it's just you? And you know, yeah, yeah. Okay. Skip all this nonsense. Now, I was playing this last night on Twitch, and I already went to the library and all that. I was good to go, but I died in a stupid way. I did a wing smash into an area that, like, killed me. I, like, wing smash past the safe room into a room with a bunch of axe guys or axe little guys and they like tossed me around <laughs> man see kind of like what's happening now but much worse we're talking about like 20 damage it was it was horrible Yeah, it was a weird, it was kind of weird going on to a particular site and seeing the image of my grandmother. That was kind of, that was kind of weird. <laughs> that was a little weird. I was like, uh, okay. Uh, that one guy is really obsessed. <laughs> So this, it's a stone mask. It's not the stone mask. This is actually the holy classes. See, beyond magical curses, that would be the, uh, the holy, the holy classes.
Okay, we, it doesn't do us any use now. This actually increases my intelligence. Lowers my defense. This increases my defense. I'll take the defense. I'll take the little defense that I have. I don't have an armor. Oh, shit. see? Look, look at that. What the fuck, dude? Alright. So we'll go to the we'll go to the librarian and we'll buy our piece of lad. Okay. Ah shit, see? They do a lot of damage right now, and I'm not liking that. But an old, it's been a long, long time, time, old, old one. friend. Old one, old oh, one. Oh, it's you, Master Alucard. What do you need? I need Is everyone mad at you? I don't. I think. Master, I think one I guy's mad at me. Bronx Beats uh, messaged me in Discord. You won't go unrewarded. Really? In that case, just tell me what you need. Uh, I'm interested in this. By the ring of blood. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's the a la carte uh, shield. Okay. You didn't buy that anyway. So that's the only thing we really need here. Everything else is garbage. Farewell for now. We're gonna hit the save room and not repeat what we did or what I did uh, last time. Oh, almost did it. Almost did it. <laughs> Let's hit the save room. You know, let's do it. Let's go in this room. Let's go in this room. Damn, little guy. Okay. Damn. Oh, that one damage. It's a lot better than the 16 or whether 12 or whatever. Sixteen. Over time, that gets annoying real fast. Do, 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 do. I'll walk into this wall. Actually, what's this? Resist ice. Okay. Goggles. Uh, what do the goggles do? Comfortable eye protection. They don't really do anything. For for my stats at all. Hmm. Okay, well. Don't worry about that. Ah! Ah, oh, shit! Dude, what the fuck? Okay, there we go. This area is not good. Already down to 37. Oh shit, look at all this. 
Wait. What ring is that? Oh, okay, never mind. It's just sellable. You know, let's, uh... We are going... There's a little room up above. We're going to hit that real fast. Maybe I get some armor. Maybe I'll get something of value. Oh, we got another piece of Vlad. Got the tooth of Vlad. So seven, seven, seven. So far, it's pretty lucky, dude. We we already have the holy glasses. We're getting a piece of Vlad. We're gonna be set to beat the game. We just have to get better, like stronger and better equipment. I mean, a bamboo sword. I could use that, but, like, I have to... We're gonna... We're gonna go down there. there, there there's a boss. It's a lesser demon. Uh, she built a soul still. and be fine. No issues. Well... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not saving. Don't need to save, but let me, uh, <laughs> let's just do that. Dude, that 16 damage is fucking bullshit. Oh, you bastard. All right, let's fight this guy. Eleven. Oh shit! Oh, that's thirty-five. That would be annoying. And he's already dead. And he's already dead. Look at that. Easier than the enemies we fought getting to him. Life max up. We have something. What is this? It is armor. It's not what it looks like, it's just a tanned leather cuirass. Okay. I guess I'll take it, you know? I guess I'll use it. We're gonna go. We'll save. Boom, 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 boom. Um. Now where do we go? Oh. I mean, we could go to the uh, clock tower. I mean, it, yeah, that would be the clock tower. It sucks that I don't have better gear, though. But there's probably going to be something I can get over there, though. Once, once we go there. To, like, the outer wall area.
What is this? The Heaven Sword. What is the Heaven Sword? Oh, okay. That's cool. That's cool. It's probably not even really the Heaven Sword, but, but okay. I mean, that's probably not what it's really called. I think I have a shield. I'll put that on. All right. We got a fancy sword. Let's see if this sword has any moves. No, it doesn't seem to have anything. Okay. Block tower. Oh, that is an interesting song for it. Interesting song choice. Leapstone. All right, that's good. Now we can double jump. sorts of stuff right here. Let's see, what, what did we pick up there? Anything important? Uh, a standard sword, Damascus fine-tuned, razor edge. It's stronger than the sword I have right now. Thing. It doesn't do anything fancy. Okay. These carpies. Oh, cool. Great. One hit kill. Oh, that sword, it does damage as it spins. And the. Oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. Oh, 
Oh no, we messed up. I was afraid it was going to happen. Because it hits it twice. This one. Shit. We're going to have to get it just a standard sword for that little gear thing. We're down to one more. Yes. Is that it? That was a lot of work for... Okay, a bloodstone. I mean, it's kind of garbage. Are you serious? He's right there. <sighs> I'm gonna I'm not gonna die to like Okay. Oh, we got the shield rod? Oh, sweet. Okay. I also have a flying sword. I, too, have a flying sword. We do have the shield rod for real, for real. Um, I 
Oh, is that just an attack? It is, isn't it? Oh, that's all it does. Okay. Now I'm out of mana. Yay. That's cool. I kind of need some food. Yay. A tart. Yeah, we can play around with that that effect. Might be kinda cool. Or we'll just use this. We'll just use this for now. The heavenly sword. Let's get down there. Oh. That little guy, man. <laughs> I don't. I'm. That little guy could mess me up. Oh, you already killed him too? Oh, okay, there we go. There we go. Strength potion, okay. Is that a library card? It is. Alright. Uh, for this boss, we're going to use... Um, I mean, we're just going to use the Heavenly Sword and maybe play around this Neutron Bomb. How are we doing? How's the stream doing? Looks like it's struggling still. Wow, that did nothing to him.
I think he's already defeated. There we go. I'll hit the save room and then we'll just wrap up. 